tonight. How many of you love the Lord? Let me see your age. Well, I believe about the same amount. Thank God. Now let's get down to business about this matter. Sometimes I ask myself how much I love the Lord. Amen. How much of Him? Do I really love Him, Brother Ed, like I say I love Him? I mean honest about it. Let's just tell the truth about it. He said, if you love me, you will think about keeping my commandments. Huh? If you love me, you may keep my commandments. Huh? Am I missing that? If you love me, you will. Well, you say, what's... He said, if you love me, you will. You will. Are you listening to me? Testing. I don't believe you're listening to me. You've not got to get your eyeballs up and roll around. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. Then he said, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? And by this shall all men know you are my disciples if you have love one or another. Amen. Amen. Now, honest about it. When you ask yourself that question tonight, I want you to ask yourself, do I love the Lord? Have I told anybody about Him today? Have I handed out one gospel track? I'm going to ask you again in just a minute. Do you love the Lord? Love Him. Oh, I mean love Him. I don't mean just kind of fond of Him. I don't mean you've got a little cross around your neck, a little gold cross with a little uh, crucifix. I don't mean that. I mean, do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Do you really love the Lord? I'm going to ask you that again. Before you stick up your hand in the air and just push that hand up there and that H2O. Look back and ask yourself now, am I telling the whole truth when I put my hand up? When I, when I stick my hand up and say, I love the Lord, do I really love Him? Now, I'm going to preach the message. This is not the message, but this sure going to open the door for me to get into it. How many of you right now can say, Brother Blue, with all my heart, I love Him. I really love him. They're going up a little slower. Psalms 97 tonight. Psalms 97. Open your Bibles, please. Psalms 97, verse 10. Ye that love the Lord. And that's what you said you did, wasn't it? That's how many of you raised your hand and said, I love the Lord. How many of you? Come on, do it again. You said you're running that in the ground. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. We're going to get down to that. Ye that love the Lord. Look out there what it says next. He said you hate evil. Amen. Folks, listen to me tonight. We've got to the place right now, we preach love and we say love, and that's right, we ought to love. But did you know, God bless your heart, there ought to be some things that the child of God really hates. Amen. Amen. I don't, oh, now I'm not talking about just saying, I don't like you. I don't like you. I, I ain't talking about that. I'm not talking about saying, I'm going to get my marbles and go home. You can't play with my paper dolls no more. I'm talking about God said, you hate evil. Amen. 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 Now that word's the strongest word we can use. He never said you just kind of don't like. Hating is when your deepest emotions... 
despise, detest, loathe. I cannot stand. Amen. Amen. We haven't got to the place today we don't hate nothing. We like to talk about love, and that's good. But God said, if you love me, there will be a mark on you. You will hate sin. Now then, we're going to take God's yardstick and find out whether we love the Lord or not. I don't know of a better yardstick to measure by, do you? There was a time in my day when the old-fashioned preacher got up, he had thunder out against alcohol. The liquor traffic, the beer joints, and the dens, and the dives. But now you don't hear nobody say nothing, amen. It's an accepted beverage. We've dressed it up. When I used to bootleg, we called it liquor. Pop skull. Moonshine. Booze, amen. But now then, they take it and put a label on it and the government says it's legal. And we put a label around it and put it in a store downtown with a glass front and, and the lights are bright and flashing. And we'll pour it in a little glass with a long stem on it and drop a chair in it and call it a cocktail. Uh -huh. I went to a church not far from the Jack Daniel Distillery. And did you know many of the church members worked at Jack Daniel? You can bet your bottom dollar that was my first and last time there. Amen. <laughs> that dear little pussy footin', back patting, compromising, Casper milk toast, corner cutting, pedal pink, pink lemonade sipping society, rose water squirting, feather lagging, gag a maggot, puke a hound off a gut wagon preacher. Amen. Hey. <laughs> Made me want to puke. I don't mean vomit. I mean puke. <laughs> You said, oh, brother, don't get upset. God said, hate it. Amen. And we walk around and said, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. We've become so passive. We've become so lucrative. We've become so sissified. Now, we, we, listen, we don't even lift up our voice against nothing. We don't cry out. There was a day... One or two grocery stores was brave enough to put beer in. Well, we backed off. Uh -huh. We said, we won't buy groceries, that. Uh -huh. yeah. And then they brought their lines a little farther and they put their beer and their wine a little farther. Uh -huh. And we said, well, I won't buy my, my groceries there either. Uh -huh. And now we've backed up to the place that we can't say nothing if the devil just come in and you buy your groceries and your beer and there sets Bud stupid. Amen. 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 And we got to where some dumb, silly, gag a maggot church member said, we need the tax money. No, we just need some people that love God and hate evil. Amen. Call out. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Amen. And now we've got that little preacher that said, We're so glad to have you here. Uh -huh. You are so sweet. Well, I can tell by looking at you folks, you're as mean as the devil. <laughs> amen. I don't care if you've got your on, amen. I can tell by looking at you, the devil's one of your first cousins. You don't hate nothing. You don't hate nothing. How long should you? You ought to get in front of the mirror and practice hating real good. Get your teeth together and start slobbing like a man. Yeah. You don't hate it. Amen. 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 I hate I can't stand nothing. I hate Bunch of silly Baptists. I get so I get so aggravated if I if I could find a job on a jackass, I'd be about half of you to death. Amen. 
Of course, there ought to be a bountiful supply as many as there's around here. Amen. How much of you say, well, I hate? How many of you hate sin? I mean, just hate sin. Now, I mean hate. I don't mean just dislike it. I mean hate it. When you drive by, legalized. That's the stupidest word I ever heard in my life. Legalized. Legalized whiskey store. State owned and operated. State owned? State owned? Whose taxes? Ooh. Get your head up. I'll let you know when we're going to pray. <laughs> Amen. So state owned makes it all right. Is that the way it is? No, God said wine is a mockery. Strong drink is a rage. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Now, he said not wise, and I'm not doing any injustice to the Bible. It means they're stupid. They're void of, of wisdom. They're void of knowledge. You say, why do you hate the liquor traffic so bad? My daddy was a bootlegger for years. I went to bed hungry so many times. Didn't have a bite to eat. I saw my mama, the only thing she had for to fix for breakfast is, is to melt some lard, hog lard, in a pan. And maybe sop some bread through it to eat. My bedroom, the floor was rotted out and the end of my bed set on the dirt. I ran up apple core that a boy threw away over in the weeds. I was so hungry. He threw the apple core away and I saw it and I ran into the weeds and there's a broken fruit jar there and I stepped my heel down. He'd like to cut my heel off. And I was so hungry I still ran like an animal to get the apple core and I ate it seed and all. We sat around today and turned our head stuck our heads in the sand like the ostrich and we said it's not a hurting us it's not bothering us but the devil's already got his eyes on your little boys and girls he'll make a drunkard out of every boy and girl he can amen he'll wreck all oh, the highways are painted red with the blood of innocent families from some glary eyed drunk heard of a Tennessee voted in that little, that real hard uh, uh, driving of the intoxication liquor law. I heard a lot of folks say, don't you think that's too rough? I don't think it's rough enough. I think it's silly. I mean, I'm for throwing the book at them. Amen. 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 You say, what if it's you? I ain't going to be me. I ain't going to get no. Amen. 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 I, I think it's just time. Who listen, you think that's going to work? That ain't going to work. It'll make me work a little while and scare wires off. That'd be the same old thing. Amen. 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 Say, send us some about three years. Mm -hmm. Oh, you be amazed how few drugs we have on the house. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let me be the judge. <laughs> When you say you don't talk like you like uh, like drunk, I, I love the man's soul that drinks it, but I hate the stuff that Amen. makes him. And I believe in a child of God, you ought to hate it too. Amen. Amen. I believe you ought to hate the liquor. I believe you ought to hate sin. If it's in you, you ought to hate it. I believe if you're slipping and sliding and you're away from God and sin in your life, you ought to hate it. Amen. Amen. Not for he just calls it don't make it right. Uh -huh. You have a child of God, you ought to have a spiritual discernment. Say, I hate that mother. Amen. I hear those men begin to cry out from the pages of God's Word. And Isaiah said, I'm undone! Okay. Amen. You ever got that word? Was it pretty when you got that one? Did you like it in your life when you got that one? I didn't like it. Now, if you can see sin in somebody else's life and don't look good, you can't see it in your own life. Friend, like, you know the word for that. It's in your home, it's in your family, it's in your church, if it's in your preacher, in your language, it's your Now, that don't mean you hate the sin. 
Now, if you don't watch out, there's a fine line there. You've got the hate to sin, but love to sin. Uh-huh. When you drive by that whiskey store down here, and you see all that food, it don't make you want to grab on the rock and just throw right through the wind. But you want to say, Lord, I, I, I like that old sin. Yes, but they ain't Now, if you're going to just hate him along the merchandise, you need to take the trip back to God. Yeah. I, I see folks that's so mixed up. They listen. Their elevator must not go all the way to the top of it. They're missing these bricks. Yeah. They start to hate and sin. That's wrong. No, no, Jesus loved sin. But he was angry with sin. Yeah. Amen. 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 We don't even angry at it. Well, this donkey don't bother me in my family. Get away, old boogie. Yeah, that's very dirty. Now, that's what the dumbest thing you've ever done, and you'll kiss the boogie man on each other. Uh-huh. 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 Why don't you say the devil's after you? Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. You ought to get your kids to wear one thing, the devil's thing. Uh-huh. I mean, the devil. Amen. Let me ask you, do you really hate sin? I mean, hey, I don't mean just kind of angry. That deepest emotion of saying, I hate. God said, if you love me, you do. We're having trouble like ours. Oh, yeah, trouble like ours. Wait a minute. Now. Hold it. Now, let's run that Bible again. He said, if you love me, you hate evil. So, let's run it backwards then. If I don't hate evil, I don't love you. Taking uh-huh. on different colors. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just kind of running it backwards. That's the way it is, isn't it? Uh-huh. That if you love me, you hate evil. Uh-huh. If you don't hate evil, you don't love me. Uh-huh. Now you're already the mind right there. Uh-huh. You stuck up your hand and said you love God, but you don't hate nothing. Uh-huh. You said, oh, all the hate. All the hate. Did you know the Bible says, let not the sun up under that. Now I used to think that meant uh, get, uh, get the good mood for something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell me, you wasn't right all your life either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you yeah. think, well, I better not be mad for it. And the sun goes down. I scared that you had your son like that. Amen. <laughs> I thought the chickens would get on there or something. <laughs> Amen. 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 And to keep the son of wrath. Be angry and seen every day. Stay angry around the clock of the devil and his Oh, You say, what do you hate? All hate. Y'all hate sin. Amen. Now get that. You ought to hate it in you. Is that right? That does work all the way around, don't it? You ought to hate it in you. You ought to hate it anywhere you see it. You ought to hate it. I mean, your blood ought to boil. Now, you do know what it is to get mad. Well, that's a stupid question. How many of you have ever, I mean, just been boiling? I don't mean simmering. I mean mad. Amen. Angry at. I hate that. Well, God said, I want you to feel that way about it. I want you to hate it. I want you to hate it. I want you to hate it. I believe we ought to hate sin. Now then, let's go a little further. Not only should we hate sin, but we ought to hate compromise. I believe one of the ugliest things that ever got in the church was the sin of compromise. It was a sad day when preachers quit having a backbone. Well, it was a sad hour when preachers started trying to uh, pet everybody and, and uh, try to get along with everybody. Brother, when you preach the Word, there will be a crowd you won't get along with. The young preacher, I used to worry about that. Folks would say one day, buddy, I'll stay with you. Man, there's one thing you can count on. I'll be right here. I mean, buddy, you can just look around and I'll be here. And they tell me that. And then about two or three weeks later, I'd plow their corn right up real close. And their old lip would drop down. And, and they'd pout. And then eventually I'd plow again and they'd leave. I couldn't understand that. 
Folks will say, buddy, preach the truth. They mean preach the truth till it gets to me. Preach the truth till it gets up where I'm living. Amen. Preach it to them. Preach the truth to that deacon. Preach the truth to that preacher. Preach the truth to them folks on the yonder, the message, and the other track. But oh, now, preacher. I said, you know, me. See, that's you to work on you too. Amen. Amen. A man that don't compromise and just fly a good straight deep through. Amen. And he don't care where the chips fall. He Amen. Don't fall right? Amen. And he'll just stand there. And he'll just preach it like it is. He yeah. don't care whether, whether you invite him anywhere or not. Amen. Whether you buy him a new suit. Yeah. He don't care whether you slip between any pocket. Amen. Amen. He just plows a good Amen. 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 Yeah. I remember I went to a church that is a man, rich man. First Sunday morning, I shook hands and he left something in my hand. Of course, I looked at him. I thought, turn it up. Man. Next Sunday morning, Another hundred bucks. Next Sunday morning, another hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. But the next Sunday morning, I plan out just a little close to this. Uh -huh. <laughs> the next Sunday morning, I just let the plow way on down till the beam was just touching the ground. Just, just way on down. And them old gospel mules hooked into that and started plowing. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, just plowed right up. Right up. Uh -huh. When he went out by me, didn't even shake <laughs> <laughs> now, a man that wants to be popular in the church, he'll tell you how good you are. Yeah. How that the church just cannot get along without you. Oh, you're just the sweetest thing since sugar was invented. Amen. And oh, where have you been all of my life? Uh -huh. Now, that's a calm promise. Yeah. Yeah. But a good gospel, straight Bible preaching, non-compromising man. He'll love you, but he'll preach to you. Amen. Amen. He'll uncover you wherever you see that. He just plow. Amen. Did you ever hear a man preaching? He just said, Lord, God, somebody's told you more. Come on now, Jerry. Amen. Amen. I remember it was like a kid, old man Kearney. Bless his old heart. The old man, he, he had a habit. Nobody ever had told him it was the old man at some point. But I always said over here, old brother Kearney, do like this. I can still see. Just reach up a storm, huh? And Eddie is point right at me. I said, that's what Mama told him, son. I said, next Sunday, I said, I'm going to move that middle eye. Yes, boy. I said, I'll fix him. I'll move over on that side. I believe if I went on the floor, he but you know what? You never could call him. You couldn't call him a compromiser. I can't stand a compromiser. I detest a compromiser. Folks, listen. If you're going to help me, plow up close to me. Amen. Amen. Plow up where I'm at. If I go to a doctor and I'm sick, I don't want him to tell you how sick that fellow is over there in the next examination room. I don't want to tell him what they're doing to that man over the operator. I want him to tell him what's wrong with me. Amen. Hey, Doc, not what's wrong with that, that person over there. What's the matter with me? Uh -huh. I don't want him to tell me I've got a cold when he knows I've got cancer. Amen. I don't want him to tell me it's an ingrown toenail when I'm about to have a heart attack. Uh -huh. I don't want him to say, Ed, you're about to have a heart attack, a stroke, a seizure. You know what? You couldn't call him a compromise. I remember the first eye catcher a little Miss Simon O's here. Old Dr. Wood. Never will forget him. Boy, I never will forget him. Walked into his office, he examined it, and just as blunt as it in your finger, he said, You got cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I said, You better have a chair where I can sit down. He said, You got cancer. 
And he, he operated on my nose, and I said, did you get it? He said, don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm glad he did. That was about 30 years ago, and he did. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, nobody ought to stay in a church five minutes that's got a compromising preacher. You oughtn't to expose your kids to a compromiser. When they get big enough to notice anything, they ought to know the preacher tells the truth. Amen. Just lays it out like it is. If you're, if you're guilty, say you're guilty. Amen. I know of a preacher here a while back that done this, and you may not like it. You may say, I don't believe in that. But I'll tell you what he did. He and this man was there in the church, and the preacher was preaching, and this man was hollering, Hey, man! Hey! But after a while, the preacher got through. And he walked right up in his face and said, I know where you're still. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not very much. I had a man in my church one time, boy, he'd already landed in New York and saw him with the Lord about how to live the <laughs> Man, he was a chap there. One morning, I mean, this one little gut and gallbladder messages, you know. Just... <laughs> and he got the fly, and the fly warmed over there. Uh -huh, I mean, you couldn't hear a word. Uh -huh. Going out the door that morning, I was shaking hands, folks back there, and one time I heard the fellow say to him, Hey, God, the boy out the door, he made You were sitting there. And he looked around at him and said, Now I'll ask you a question. If a bulldog had you to the secret bridge, you say, Sit here. <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 I often wonder why folks will go sit down and hear a compliment. I'm honest with you. I cannot figure that out. Now, I have problems with that. He said, you shall know the truth, uh -huh. the half truth, a little bit of it. He said, you shall know the truth. Yes. The truth you'll know it. Amen. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. Amen. I can't, and nothing, I can't, I, I cannot persuade me understand why anybody put money in a compromising church. Mm -hmm. That's a sin. Amen. That's evil and wicked. Amen. Amen. You ought to put a dime in it, not a penny. Well, you said the preacher stopped. Let him stop. Amen. Amen. I'll preach his <laughs> You can't do that. <laughs> Me and old brother Charles will carry him. You won't have to get nobody else. <laughs> Bury that sucker. Amen. I ain't got no use for a compromise. If you're one, stay away from me. I don't want nothing to do with you. My soul. I'd rather have every flea in Florida on me to be around you. And Florida's got them too, ain't they? Come on now, shake your head, girl. Sit over there like I don't know about Florida. I lived down there for nine years. There's a lot of fleas in Florida. Amen. <laughs> Further on down, you get more of them. You say, why, Brother Blue, our preacher's a good mixer. Well, right there, I'll tell you there's something wrong in you. Amen. God never said I ought to be a mixer, separator. Amen. He said, well, they're not going to all love you. They didn't love him. What makes you think they're going to love you? Amen. If you live right, they ain't going to love you. They ain't going to like you. Amen. I'm tired of this crowd running around trying to get everybody to like them. Amen. Not everybody likes me. Somebody... I don't know whether since I was up here or not, Brother Charles, I heard my motor in my car begin to knock. I don't mean peck, I mean knock. I tried to get it fixed, and they couldn't fix it. Had to eventually tear the motor down, and somebody had put sand in my motor. They could dip just handfuls of sand out of the... You said, who done that? Well, I promise you one thing, it wasn't one of my friends. Amen. You remember about me telling you when I was up here before, somebody shot at me. And that wasn't one of my buddies either. Huh? And you say, well, my brother, what will happen if I live right? I'll tell you what. Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer for him. Never said it may happen. He said it will. Amen. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You start keeping the commandments of God, you'll be peculiar. You'll be an oddball, and the world won't like you. Amen. 
don't like me. I know they don't like me. When they do start liking me, I'm going to go to the altar. When I start getting popular with the world, honey, I'm heading for the mourner's man. I know something's wrong in my life. Amen? Say amen. Nod your little pointed head or something. Folks, listen. The day the world starts liking me, I'm outside the will of God. Is that so? All right. So we ought to hate compromise. We ought to hate sin. I don't care where it's at. We ought to hate it. You raised up your hand and said, I love the Lord. He said, if you do, you hate evil. Now, it's just that clear. He said, if you do, you hate evil. He never said you'll start. He said, you do now. Amen. Now, you said, I don't know whether I do or not. He said, well, if you don't, you don't love me. See, this isn't a shouting message. This is a yardstick message. It's to hold up to the side of you and see whether you lied when you held up your hands and said, I love the Lord. I'm beginning to believe some of you right now wouldn't stick up your hands as high as you did a while ago. You had the dirt nerve to stick up, stick up your hands and say, I love the Lord. And, and, and look around. Is there anything you hate? I don't mean dislike. I mean hate it. Hate it with every fiber of your being. Now, there's not many of you can say that, is there? Because you've been going around saying, love, 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 oh, love, oh, love. And God said, okay, that's fine. But the other side of the coin said, hate. Just hate. Now I want to ask you a question. I ain't going to ask you to raise up your little hand. Don't raise it. I said don't raise up your hand. <laughs> but just ask yourself right now and pretend I'm talking. Ask yourself what you hate. Somewhere preaching. 
She used to drive. No, I was driving. I said, honey, turn the radio on. Maybe we can hear some preaching. Boy, we're going through one of the old towns, you know, down the country where preachers will run up in front of a microphone. They'll bring all the congregation in them, and they'll shout them to death, and they'll preach. So, and they'll come out, you know, they'll, boy, they'll preach and preach, and they'll shout. And they got it on just as they run another fresh preacher up in front of the microphone. He's fresh. Ah, he said, I don't know where it's at in the Bible, but I know it's in there. That's a word. I don't want to preach on that. Why? And everybody. He's quoting something that's not even in the Sears Roebuck category. Now, that wasn't so bad, but that bunch of nuts started shouting. Amen. 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 Man, they was tearing that place apart piece by piece. Now that is willing ignorance. That's a man satisfied with being stupid. Amen. I hear a preacher say, you're all back. Well, I'm just an old country preacher. And I don't know no. He did not tell me a couple of times. Amen. 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 I knew he did not tell me I knew that boy was dumb. Yeah. Somebody said if he can't get in the house, he'll just talk a while. I yeah. know. Woman turkey said, well, I, I never do study none. I just let the Lord fill my mouth. I'm a Lord. Amen. Amen. God said, study. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. Amen. As newborn babe desiring the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Amen. Got a bunch of Baptists sitting around that's still got a. Uh huh. Amen. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Too deep for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too deep. He goes, my head. I'm about to get to be in a run. Hey. <laughs> you don't have to be high. You're over your head in a run. Hey. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Poor old preacher. Run their crazy self to death. Go on, this and try to keep him in a good mood. Uh -huh. Run over here drinking old strong coffee. Uh -huh. Eating a whole lot of dough. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, amen. Amen. You don't know if you happen to put him in the spotlight a few minutes and amen. you don't pat him on the back. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. I'm going to go up. I'm going to be very bad for you, idiot. That's the report. Our churches are full of people that's willingly ignorant. Been sitting on a few 20 years, can't teach even a, a Sunday school. Never growed that much. They're spiritually retarded. Amen. Spiritually retarded. You can just start talking about the most elementary things of doctrine. And folks say, I don't like doctrine. Mm -hmm. Well, you're just messed up right there. Amen. You ought to look in the book and see how much doctrine's in there. It's full of it. Amen. Amen. Did you ever see a... Did you ever see a daddy? Come and come and sit this little boy said, Son... Let him get your report card. Hello, boy, just a grin. He run and gets his report card back to daddy. Daddy said, boy, look at that. Daddy's coming to all the man and son. I'm so proud of you, boy. You're nothing good. Man and son, I, I'm so proud of you. That's my boy. Well, turn the coin right around. Can you imagine somebody coming to your house and you call and you won't say, this is my stupid son. <laughs> boy, this boy is so dumb. <laughs> son, 
Some while our company's here, how about showing them how dumb you are? Count the two. <laughs> One, 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 now don't tell me. One, 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 now if you don't tell me, I'll catch on a minute. One, 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 five, five. Can you just imagine a daddy taking his son's picture and putting the papers in? I want everybody to meet my stupid son. <laughs> My boy is so dumb, and I'm so proud of him. Oh, bro, brother, I'm telling you, I want you to meet my stupid, ignorant, dumb, crazy. They got no sense, please. Now, are you ready? What do you feel? Get loud. There's a lot of preachers that can be honest. Yeah. But I want you to meet my stupid congregation. They're so ignorant, you can't get them to study. Oh, and they carry a little bad Bible on their arm. Now they can boast how they're King James 16 or 11. But oh, they won't study it. They won't hide it in their heart. Some of them might think they're not going to work very right good. Like, well, I like what I love it. Oh, they like to stick a Bible on their arm and say, I buy the glory. They go to Bible and say, God said, love that word. Put it in your heart. Bless your heart. Amen. We ought to hate ignorance. Amen. That's right. Amen. It's a sin to say ignorance. Amen. It's a sin to say ignorance. Amen. 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 I found out a while back why folks don't listen to people. You know what they want? You know what they want? If you want to get the shock of your life, go in and listen to some Sunday teachers. They'll bore you out of your shock. Well, well, there was that study brother Sunday. Well, that's what you want. You want to get the shock of your life, go in and listen to some Sunday teachers. They'll bore you out of your shock. Well, well, there was that study brother Sunday. Well, that told me right there is stupid. They ought to have enough sense to know that you don't get your Sunday school lesson ready on Sunday. Amen. Amen. It takes a spread out time of the week to study the Bible there. Amen. And dig and read it and research and search in the Word of God Amen. to be ready to feed that class. Amen. If you're one of the Saturday night Sundays, you ought to resign. Amen. 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 You ought to get up. Amen. Amen, brother. Hello. Hello. You're a thief, Satan. Or you're not out to thief. And you've not studied. Come on. And you've not searched and researched and ransacked the Word of God. Give all of the people more. Amen. 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 I had to stop preaching and go to the altar and report to me. He said, no, good, yes, sir. Preaching don't just work out that way. It works yeah, back here. It's yeah. not me. It's him in me. That's it, brother. Exactly. God, help you. You just listen to me. You're listening. But if you listen to him, you speak through me. Hey, sin. Hey, compromise. Hey, willing ignorance. Then. You ready? Hello. I believe you ought to hate laziness. Amen. Amen. Uh huh. Amen. Yeah. Pure old laziness. Amen. Yeah. I don't believe nobody ought to be lazy. Amen. I can't stand it. Amen. God said, I have to find something to do to it with all of you. Amen. 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 I mean, get with it like Halo does the sun. Yeah. I mean, get in there. Come on! Get out! Let's go! Amen. 
Now, my precious wife, listen to me. She's a woman. She's got traits of, uh, of a woman. She's a woman of love and hope. And that woman, she makes me so... <laughs> uh, she does, I don't know why. Tiki said, hey, you ought to slow down. You're going to kill me. <laughs> I love it, yeah. I probably would. I'm so tired out there, my legs are just shaking. I was going to fall in the bed and I have to get out. But Ed turned when I stopped. So if Ed, if you let me, you've been my friend one week. standing there giving directions out. I found me a piece of two before about that long. He leaned all 400 pounds in that shell and I draw back and I knock that shell and hang out for the good bell for the next 10 years. He knocked our snakes down. He got it hanging up in our spring. I got right up over and slobbered all over and said, Get! <laughs> I don't mean lay there, I mean get. He had crawled out of the and the snake all over. Amen. Got to come join us this one time. He said, Buddy, I'm ready for the work. You know, you want me to do this. This is a true show that we got. The next day, we're going to have to start digging a ditch. 80 foot long. But I so what? I said, You mean that? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I read. I'm ready to go to work. Now, I can't just see up here for here and not do nothing. And I let him back out the little tube shed we had there where we kept our tubes as we go to work. And I opened the door and handed him a long handle shed. He said, What do you say? Oh, I said, Work, man, work. <laughs> well, he said, I'm more of a trader type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more of a, you know, office person. I said, we don't need no thing. It's all positions are full. I said, all we need is a ditch dug around on there so wide and so deep and that long. I said, you never saw him wrong. God said, call you the Lord in a hurry. That is sin. I, I didn't hear you. I say, what was that? What? But we've got folks that want to sit around, you know, mm -hmm. do nothing. Yeah. And when somebody else does Come something, on. they'll get mad at them. Amen. 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 Preachers that had nothing, they'd be out there busy and working. Uh -huh. I'm sure I like a more than I like a, a lazy hunk of lard. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 I'm going to buy anybody a candy bar if it be me. Amen. Amen. I just love folks that do this. Yeah. They ain't got no use for me. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 No use. I believe we all hate to sin. Yes. You know, I believe we all hate compromise. I believe that. I believe we all hate women and evil. And I believe we all hate labels in the church. Yes. I believe it's time for the church to go to work. Yes. I don't mean look at work. I mean get in there and go to work. Yes. Yes. Hello! Amen. 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 I mean, uh, so, hey, preacher, uh, can I mow the yard this week? Hey, preacher, uh, last time for me to do that, I want to do it. Uh-huh. One old man, I'm going to pastor I'm going to close. I'm going to do I am. I'm going to do I went to pastor a church, and the old man came up in his wheelchair the next the first Sunday morning. He said, now, preacher, you don't know me, but I've got a job around here that I do. Please go take your own son. Well, I said, I. I don't do what it is. He said, you see, I don't have any legs. And I can't push a lawnmower. He said, every time they push them, every time they move along, I go get some scissors and I crawl all the way around the church. And I'll pick out the grass. Hey, he said, because I can't do nothing else. He said, oh, I'll do a good job. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey! You take that grass, pick it off, and brush it away from you. 
we got you and you get on the cursing book uh-huh. in the church. Come on, they won't get me through that. Uh-huh. Don't think you can get me through that. I ain't gonna do that. Uh-huh. I ain't gonna do that. Uh-huh. Please you bless me every kick that I have. Uh-huh. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Uh-huh. I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that. Uh-huh. That means I'm getting it sometimes down and you think you can give an order to someone. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 I preached this message not long ago at a place and they wouldn't even come play the organ for me. I had one lady stick her tongue out at me and go, ooh. And I said, ooh, right back at you. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. Look up here at me. Look up here at me. You're looking at an old, tired preacher. But look at me. Look at me. Folks, do you love the Lord? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Are you really angry at the devil and his works? I mean, honest. Don't, don't, don't kid yourself. See, I don't know whether you are or not. You're not raising your hand. I ain't asking you to. But are you angry at anything? Does a Budweiser sign make you mad? As a, I mean, just mad. Huh? Play softly. They tell me music comes a savage beast. I believe I need some. Head blue. Head blue. Do you love the Lord? Ed, do you love the Lord? Lord, I want to love you more. Ed Blue, do you love the Lord? You want me to tell the truth, don't you? Huh? You're looking at me right now, ain't you? You're wondering what I'm going to say. I've got to tell the truth. Not like I ought to. I ought to love Him more. If I did, I'd hate sin and evil more. I really would, wouldn't I? Ed, do you love the Lord? Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Every Christian praying. Here's that question again. I'm going to ask you something. And then I want you to raise your hands this time if you do. How many of you love the Lord? Take them down. I wonder tonight before we give the invitation if there's how many lost people here. I wonder if there's one person that said, Brother Blue, I'm lost. I don't know the Lord. I don't know Him. I don't. I really don't. I ought to, but I don't. I wish I did, but I don't. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? If you're lost, I mean, if you don't know Christ, would you raise your hand? I know the message has not been to the lost sinner. I know that. But would you raise your hand and say, pray for me if you're lost? Then how many tonight will have to say, Preacher Blue, that message has caused me to see I don't love Him like I ought to, and I don't hate sin like I ought to hate it. Preacher? I'm so ashamed I've drifted to the place of accepting sin in a pretty good light. I wonder how many God's dealt with your heart tonight and you say, God spoke to me about this matter and I don't hate it like I ought to. I don't love Him like I ought to. I wonder how many you raise your hand and say, God's dealt with me tonight. God spoke to me. God showed me where I'm at. Take them down. My Father... My Father, my sweet, loving Father, a lot of folks ought to come to the altar tonight. And Lord, help them not to come down here and make a mockery out of this altar. 
If they're coming for business, fine. But if they're not going to come for business, Lord, don't, don't let them come. But God, on the invitation tonight, help people that mean business to get on their knees and say, Lord, I want to love you more. But, oh, God, put a hatred in my heart for sin. For everything that's evil and wicked, in Jesus' name, amen. While we stand together, while we sing. You mind God now. I'm not going to twist your arm. You do what you know you ought to do. Sing it. Just a moment before we sing another verse, every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to ask you something. Have you minded God tonight? Have you really minded the Lord tonight? Would you raise your hand if you have? If you know in your heart you've been obedient to God, you've done what He said to do, would you raise your hand tonight? If you know you have, if you've searched your heart and done what God told, would you raise your hand right now? Take them down. How many tonight will have to say, Preacher Blue, I haven't. There's some things that's still undone in my heart. Needs to get right with God. Would you raise your hand? Not right, Preacher. Come on, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yes. Yes, amen. Our Father, there's many others that ought to come. In this next verse, help them to do so. Sing it, brother. Have thine own way. to have His way in your life? Are you really honest tonight with God? Do you want Him to have His way in your heart? Wounded and weary. Charles, sir, would you come please and conduct and continue any part of the service you feel that God would have you to and then continue to sing. Go ahead, sing another verse for us. head just a moment, would you please? I hope and pray tonight that you find something in your soul that you really hate more than anything. You ought to hate sin. There ought to be some things that you really have convictions about. 
Lord spoke to my heart yesterday and he said to me, just as clearly as I know I'm standing here right now, he said, would you die for me? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, that's quite a question. That came into my soul. He said, would you die for me? What'd you answer him, preacher? What'd you say? I said, Lord, by your grace, if you want me to die, I'll die. If that's what God wants, I'd die for him. But it'd have to be his grace, because when the hour came, I know the flesh would want to run. I know I'd want to get out of it, and I know I'd want to live. You talk about a humbling experience. A man would really have to humble himself down to do that. That's what Jesus did in Philippians 2. He humbled himself and became obedient to death. I'll die. Would you die for him? That's what they said to Polycarp. 86 years he knew him. He said, he never forsook me. He's always been my friend. He said, I'll die for him. And he died. They took Ignatius and took him and threw him to the lines. He died. The Christians, as Jack Chick talked about, died in Yugoslavia. They died. The Christians died in Germany. They died. The Christians died in France. They died. They're going to die in this country. If Jesus doesn't come soon, folks, you're going to see the blood of your sons flowing. And they're going to die. The message he preached tonight convicted my soul deeply. Now listen to me. He brought a message on compromising preachers. I hate them. God being my witness tonight, I despise them. Isaiah said, the people said, give us somebody that will speak smooth words to us. Smooth words to us. How much easier would it be to build a big congregation, give you slick talk and smooth words and a nice sweet radio ministry and smooth talk? No, no, that's not what they want. He's on there now and he said he has what the people want to hear. They kicked the preaching off for the music. Amen. Amen. And that's what the people want to hear. There's where we are today, friends. Amen. Compromise. Folks, you're going to be put to the test. Do you really believe? Are you really a believer? Are you going to stand for the book? Are you going to stand for the faith? Do you love the Lord with all your soul? I pray that Jesus comes and I can get caught out just like that, gone to meet him. That'd be so nice. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful to never go to another graveyard, to never, to never see another sickness, to never have to to watch somebody dwindle away and then die. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to just go? But God may call on all of us to suffer and die. Amen. I'm no better than Polycarp. I'm no better than Ignatius. I'm no better than Cranmer. And I'm no better than the rest of them. No better. God may call on us to die. And if he does, I know that the very moment if they chop my head off or they shoot me or hang me, I know the moment my soul leaves this old body, I'll be with Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's a few things I'd like to see happen, though, before that happens. Amen. I'm not getting out of this world alive. I'm going to be with the Lord. I know that. And I think God may be preparing us for the worst. I don't know. But I tell you what I've seen, friends. I have. This is one of the few left that preach. Amen. Amen. They have gone down to the pit. They've quit. No convictions. Don't preach anything. And the people, you know why? That's what the people want. Give us something smooth. Give us something slick. Be easy on us. Don't preach hard. Ease up. Quit preaching so hard. Don't be so mean. Don't be so mad. God bless your soul. Remember this, Christian. You know what mom and daddy used to listen to. You know the word that used to be preached in this country. And you know the same God that they went out to face. You're going to go out to face. And God's going to call you on the carpet. And you're going to have to give an account for the preaching that you put up with. I don't believe in supporting a compromising church and a compromising preacher. And if your preacher compromises and your church compromises, get out of it. You don't have any right to stay in it. None whatsoever. 
Amen. One more verse, if no one comes. Can you close the altar call tonight? Come on. Come on. brother bring it. thank you for bring, for the message thank you for what you said thank you thank you we're going to take up an offering in just a moment for him a love offering and this is the way he's supported he's an evangelist he preaches the word and he could have given you a slick smooth talk tonight and and possibly taken a little more money from some people who would give it for a slick smooth talk but he preached the book and God's going to bless him for it you know that in the Civil War but they would, the spies and the couriers would hide the orders within their chest, and they would risk their very life crossing enemy lines to carry secrets that they had found on the other side. And some of them died. One of them was Nathan Hale. He said, I regret that I have but one life to give for my country. That was a man. God bless your soul, that was a man. I have something far more precious than an enemy secret. Do you know that 99 and 9 tenths of the Gentile Christians in this world don't have near the respect for that book that the Jew does? Would you die for it? There's your faith. You don't have that, you don't have any faith. You thought the Baptist church was your faith, didn't you? The preacher. You thought what mom and daddy taught you. Folks, don't you realize that they'd have no faith if it hadn't been for that? You realize you hold the only holy thing upon the face of this earth when you pick up that book? That's the Holy Bible. That is God's Word. That's my faith. Right there. I hide it in my heart that I might not sin against God. Right there, that book. Say so you're a bibliolater. I don't worship a book. But his word is esteemed above his name. Amen. And that's his word. Amen. Right there. Amen. And it's alive. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's have a couple of men. Please go back to the back. A couple of you men. Would you please take a, one of these um, little offering plates. And let's give an offering for the brother. Okay. You two fellows. Just going back to the door there. We'll have a word of prayer. And you folks will be at liberty to go. Pray for the brother now. Pray the Lord gives him strength to get through the meeting with us, okay? And the Lord continues to bless him in his ministry and takes him on wherever he's going to next. All right, let's have prayer and you'll be dismissed to go. Brother Gary Williams, please dismiss us in prayer. Yes, Lord, yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, I pray that this church, Father, yes. this church, not any of them, right here, Lord, yes. that we be a stand, Lord God, in this community, in this state, in this country, Father. Lord God, that, that we would stand for you. Hallelujah. Us, Father, as compromisers, as people no. that just go to church, as just Sunday Christian folks. 
the Lord that we have the courage from that we are yes. Lord in these last days. And God, did you call my name? God bless. God bless. God bless. Hallelujah. God grant. No, no way. God bless your holy name. say one word and I'll let you go. I didn't mean to extend the service, but there's something I'd like to say to you. I'd like, I believe God wants to give us revival, Brother Sean. Amen. I believe that. I feel in my heart. God wants to give us revival. Amen. Will you make this a matter of real prayer tomorrow, tonight? Pray that God will meet with us in a special way tomorrow. Amen. Night. And pray for me. I need your prayers. A lot of Amen. people think I try to be antisocial. That's not so, Brother Sean. Oh, I know that. Physically, I, I'll probably maybe stay in a bit the bigger portion of the day tomorrow. I'm just wore out. I'm literally worn out. So pray for me. I'm not trying to stay away from you. I just don't feel like doing anything. So just pray for me. Amen. 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 Amen.